<laughs> Hello, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. No matter where you are, wherever you're joining us from today, welcome to episode 17 of the Coach's Corner. Um, we're excited to talk to you today about awareness. So this month, the month of July, was Eye Injury Prevention Awareness Month. I don't know how many of you knew that, but I thought that was pretty cool because it is important. Um, when we think about uh, eye, eye injury prevention, um, let's see the next slide, Michael. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> We're all discombobulated today, huh? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> very. Oh, good. <laughs> it's good. So, um, with uh, eye injuries, believe it or not, in the U.S. Annually, there's like over a million eye injuries and it's the leading cause of visual impairment. Isn't that crazy? Yep. I mean, it's, it's no surprise. So I have, I have a pretty close relationship with, uh, with this topic because prior to my vision loss, mm -hmm. um, I, I was, you know, uh, ex-military, I'm a veteran. I worked <laughs> at a shipyard. Yeah, I, I've worked at, at a machine shop. And so I've worked in these environments where you constantly had to wear safety glasses. It's, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a big deal. There are eye wash stations everywhere. And it's, it's, it's very important that you take care of your eyes. This is a very good topic, I think, for the, um, uh, for the month. It should be a year-round topic. It really yeah. should. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. You know, like 90% of these injuries can be prevented if people just, you know, Take care Safety of glasses. take the proper precautions. Mm -hmm. You know, I think you're going to talk to us a little bit about that, right? I, I might. I don't know. I'm still kind of thinking about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's see the next slide. Yes, ma'am. All right. So um, there's all kinds of different injuries that can happen, right? Um, it could be caused from sports. It could be caused from like debris. It could be caused, believe it or not, it could be caused by fireworks too. You know, people like, they like fireworks and they don't understand that they're actually kind of dangerous. <laughs> what? You know? what? What? Yeah. Hmm. I'm learning a lot today. <laughs> right? <laughs> and you know, the most, like, I would say that probably one of the most common ones is household chemicals. Cause yep. you know, people will clean their house you know, and they have all kinds of different uh, cleaning uh, chemicals that they use. And mm -hmm. if you use that wrong or whatever, oh my gosh, it could definitely mess up your eyes. And we want to be very careful. Also, battery acid. No, like how I, I personally don't really get that one because how could you get battery acid? I mean, it, it's, uh, it seems like a, a very difficult thing to do to get the acid out of a battery. Am I wrong? Or help me out here, Michael. <laughs> help me out. So I, I don't, I don't, I don't think you were necessarily talking about like the, the, the car battery. Oh. I think a lot of, uh, there was a problem with e-cigarettes overheating, right? Those are really popular oh. and exploding in people's faces, um, especially gotcha. when you're putting it up to your face. So yeah, yeah, that there was, there was a, you know, when you think of, battery acid eye injuries um, unless someone's like dumping battery acid on each other like, <laughs> it's probably these e-cigarettes that are popping in people's faces yeah yeah that's not good gotta be careful with that for sure mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. so let's see the next slide sure all right so i'm gonna let you handle this one michael because i think you have the most experience with this protective eye stuff so you tell us, how can we protect our eyes? Yeah, so it's, um, it's very important that you, you wear something that is comfortable for, uh, for you, because then you're more likely to wear the, the goggles or the eye protection if they're comfortable. It's really when you don't like them or they don't fit well that, that people don't wear them, right? So, you know, some things you can, you can find are like, you know, the classic, uh, like Science Lab goggles, right? It's very important that you protect the sides as well, because that's where a lot of injuries come in is sometimes people think that they're just their prescription glasses are fine, right? They'll protect them. In most cases, in everyday life, sure, possibly. But if you have people that are working around you and there's possibility of projectiles, if you have someone that's leaf blowing, if you have someone that's like, you know, doing some woodwork or something, um, you definitely want to protect your um, 
uh, the side, right? Your peripheral sort of entry. Mm -hmm. But these are like uh, like chemist, chemical science glasses. Okay. Um, these are really nice too. These are a little more, more modern version of that and they look cool, they look sleek. And what's great about these types of goggles are that you can, um, uh, you can wear your prescription glasses underneath them, right? They're big enough so that they fit over your glasses so you don't have to sacrifice, you know, you, what, what vision you do have. Um, then you get into like the cooler, really sleek stuff. If you don't, have, if you don't wear any prescription glasses, you can wear something like this. Favorite color, pink, right? These are really nice. I got two of them. Favorite color, pink? Yeah. <laughs> I guess I want to wear two sets of goggles at the same time. I got two. So yeah, and they also sell, sell like little attachments that you can take my headset off here that you can also clip onto the um, the side of your glasses so that essentially you can use your glasses as safety glasses. Not the the, the most safest, right? The most coverage is probably one of you know these these style, but um, you can have those little clips that go on that just give you that coverage on the side. But oh, if so let's they're, say well they're like, they're like little flaps or something that like. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're just like little plastic clips that go oh. on the side and they're like shields. Yeah, that's what it is, the oh. shields. Okay. Um, yeah, so you're probably thinking, well, I have low vision. I don't do a lot of working with hand tools and stuff like that. And which that may be true, but you also have to be um, cognizant of other people that are doing stuff around you uh, because that's when you get, you know, that's when you're not expecting it, that's when you get hit, right? The person using... The, the tools or the machinery or whatever that is, maybe he has safety glasses on, but you don't. Well, as long as you're within, you know, uh, walking distance of that person, you can potentially be injured. So it's, it's, it's not only, it's, it's not only important for you to wear this stuff if you're handling this equipment or, you know, these chemicals, but it's also important when other people are around you. So, and that's something that, you know, everybody has to make sure to be, to, you know, be aware about. Yeah, I've heard of like, when people are using like a weed whacker or something, even mm -hmm. like a blade of grass has like actually like injured or like stabbed an eyeball. I'm like, that is- Oh yeah, totally. Hence. Yeah. Well, you see the, um, like during hurricanes, right? They're like the, the side of barns are penetrated with the weirdest stuff. And it's just, mm -hmm. just it's, it's gotta hit you at the right angle at the right speed and it'll cut you. And it's not. Yeah. yeah, definitely protect your eyes out there, guys, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. All right, next slide. Thank you, Michael, for that demonstration. And thank you so much for having examples of different goggles that we could wear. Yeah, yeah, no problem. All, All right. right, so one other thing to be, uh, can, is when, when you're dealing with household chemicals, mm -hmm. um, so, Think, think of the, like, I don't know if you've seen like a, a, a good example or like the, the aerosol cans, right? Uh, like, oh. a, like a spray paint can. Uh, sometimes you really don't know which direction that nozzle is pointing in or like a, you know, something stupid is like a, a can of Pam, right? Sometimes you don't know if that, where that spray, that the opening is and you end up spraying right. yourself or your hand. So, um, some things you can do are, you know, obviously make sure you double check um, uh, that you, <laughs> you that your your nozzle, you know, whether you can feel it or not, make sure it's pointed the right way. And you right. can also use like these little uh, these little paints. I don't know if you've ever used one of these, but the ba essentially you just make it's like puffy paint, right? You you yeah. make little tactile dots yourself so that you can make, you know, locate the, the opening of the nozzle and put the tactile dot, you know, put a little, open this to the top and put a little dot on there so that you could feel it and you know which way, you know, the, the correct way that it should be facing. Um, I, I do that, uh, I use these quite a bit actually for, for things like that. And when, you know, I need to put things in a certain direction. So that's, that's you know, very, uh it's it's very important even if you're dealing with something like pledge right and you think well that's it's still a chemical even though it may not seem like it's a, a hazardous uh -oh, material yeah. it's still a chemical and it could injure your eye windex stuff like that um thankfully a lot of a lot of those types of of, of like cans of spray cans mm -hmm. um they do form their tops in a way 
where it, there's a groove, right? There's a big long groove that you know to put your finger in. So that's really good. We've come, we have come a long way, uh, or companies have come a long way in making their cans sort of accessible uh, in that way, uh, you know, for safety reasons, obviously. So, but you do have that occasional can. Maybe you have a can of WD-40 or something, uh, and you spray it. You don't definitely don't want that stuff in your eyes. So, um, aside from wearing safety glasses which you should always have if you're going to be handling these types of things um you know there's there are other things you can do to um to prevent uh, eye injury due to chemicals and sprays and splashing you know what that reminds me of that reminds me what? of uh the movie dumb and dumber <laughs> remember where he sprays oh, the tanaka oh, yes <laughs> he points yes. at the rug and he sprays, sprays the guy's eye <laughs> Yeah. See, that's, that's what we're trying to prevent. <laughs> yes, yes. Don't spray yourself yeah. or others in their eyes. <laughs> Definitely don't want that. All right. Sorry. All right. Next slide. Yes, sir. Bam. All right. So um, there's all kinds of different treatments, right? In mm -hmm. case there are eye, eye injuries. So there's like antibiotics, antifungals, mm -hmm. antivirals, you know, drops, all kinds of different things. And uh, you're lucky you have a, a first responder there with you. So she would definitely yes. know what to do, right? Yes. So one of the things that you have to consider is that the injury, let's say you do have a, you know, a, a small cut or a scratch um to your eye it, it's not just the laceration it's something that may have been introduced into your eye so if you get like cut by a tree branch or some leaves or something outside like that might have some some, some fungus some, some bacteria on it uh so you have to be careful that you don't ignore those types of um those types of injuries uh so yeah so some of the things that they may give you are you know the, the things that we have listed here for that you think yes. why why would i need if i just you know bump my eye why would i need antifungal uh antibacterial all this stuff and it's like well because you don't know what got in there exactly and that's uh that's like the main way they treat conjunctivitis right there's yep and there's different types there's the bacterial one there's a viral one so that's why there's different types of antibiotics and the, the sooner you get it looked at and the sooner you get your treatment, the better it is because you don't want to wait around to see if, you know, after a few days, if you have an infection or something really bad. So, you know, get, get checked. If you do have, if you do suffer from an eye injury, get checked like right away. Yeah. So let's see what the next slide is. Oh, I think I know. I think I know too. <laughs> <laughs> First so let's say, yep, let's say you get an eye injury, Myrna. What do you not want to do? I definitely don't want to wait to get it checked. <laughs> yes, don't do that. <laughs> that's for sure. And you know, something that's so natural for people to do is to like rub their eye. Oh, yeah. Right? You rub yeah. it or you like, mm -hmm. if you really want to put something in it, don't do that. Because if it's like a little piece of something, a little particle of something, you could be doing further damage by like scratching your eye up. So yes, 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 yes. You do not want to rub whatever's in there mm -mm. Uh, around your eye. You're just going to cut it more. Right. You don't want to mm -hmm. apply any kind of like medication or anything right away, because if you don't know what's going on, you don't know what could be harmful. So yep. you want to definitely be careful with that. Um, and then like, you know, being visually impaired or low vision, Sometimes we can't see little particles in there. So of mm -hmm. course it's our instinct, right? To try to remove it or try to like dig in there. Don't dig in your eyes, please don't do that. No, do not do that. <laughs> what should we do? Well, what do you think? What should we do, Michael? So for uh, an impact injury, let's say you get just bumped in the eye, uh, you definitely want to apply a cold pack. Right. And that goes for most impact injuries. If you get bruises or if you get knocked, you want to uh, you want to put, a, put an ice pack on it and that'll prevent swelling. You do not want a swollen eye. No. Definitely. Right. And then if you do get some 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 sand or dust or, you know, even even like chemicals, uh, do you want to flush it with sterile water? So that is sterile water. That is not tap water. 
That is not bottled water. That is sterile water. That basically means that if you have an eyewash station nearby, use the eyewash station, right? If you work in an environment that they provide that, you know, if you have those, um, they should tell you exactly where they are and they should be clearly marked. Um, otherwise, you need to get to a, um, you know, to someone that, to help you look at it. Unless you have a bottle of sterile water somewhere, then that's cool. Like distilled water or something like that? I don't know if distilled water is necessarily considered sterile. Gotcha. Um, yeah, but sterile. You definitely sterile water. We'll stick yeah. with that. Yes. Yeah. And uh, just to, to let everyone know, by all means, Michael and I are not medical or healthcare professionals whatsoever. This is information that we gathered from where? The Eye Institute, right? Mm -hmm. The National Eye Institute, yeah. So if you want further information, definitely feel free to navigate to the Eye Institute um, website and get more mm -hmm. information. But let's yeah, that, keep going here. Absolutely. So if you do get a cut or some sort of a puncture uh, in your eye, so you want to um, you want to cover both eyes. So if you have eye pads, you want to cover both, or you can cut the bottom of a cup like a um, like a styrofoam cup or something and sort of uh, wrap it, right? Um, now, you might ask, well, what what's the reason for covering both I, eyes? I actually was asking that in my head. So <laughs> <laughs> let's hear it. So, why, why would we cover both eyes? So if you have a cut or if you have something in your eye and you, and you only cover that one eye, you're still using your other eye to look around, but your eyes don't move independently, right? Like geckos, right? They both move. Right. So it'll reduce the tendency to try to move your look around and move your eyes around, which should cause more agitation, more, more irritation. So if you can cover both eyes, right? And you want to cup it so you don't have anything pushing against your eye. But you want to use something to cup it. If you have an eye patch, um, if you have two eye patches, it's going to be kind of weird, but use two eye patches. Uh, <laughs> so that, yeah, so and then get down to uh, an, an emergency or an ED, um, urgent care, go see a, you know, go see a doctor. Yes, for sure. That's very interesting because, uh, yeah, yeah. That's true. You, I, I never thought of you want to cover both eyes. I, I literally would never have thought that. But that makes a lot of sense because it's true. We move our eyes, they move at the same time simultaneously. So if one's yeah. injured, we don't want to like keep moving, especially if you have something in there. Yeah, you yes. don't want to move it around and make things worse. Yeah, that's an interesting one. I've been through a lot of um, eye safety training courses and a bunch of OSHA stuff, and I don't remember ever hearing anything like that. So that's 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 new to me, but it absolutely makes sense. Yeah, totally. Also, get someone to take you to the um, to the ER or the ED. Don't cover both your eyes and then <laughs> call an Uber. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, definitely seek assistance if you must cover both eyes. Yes, or, please. you know, if you're visually impaired, obviously, you want to have someone help you get to uh, emergency care as soon as possible. Absolutely. All right. So, um, Again, we are talking about being visually impaired or mm -hmm. partially sighted. I like to use the phrase partially sighted. Um, mm -hmm. We definitely need to take even more precaution because of the fact that we can't necessarily see detail, right? So mm -hmm. we definitely want to find someone, a loved one, a friend, a neighbor, whoever it is, a sighted person to help us, um, you know, like, like kind of assess the situation with our eyes right? If we have a, an injury, because, um, you know, again, we don't want to go trying to figure it out ourselves because we might be making it worse. So just be aware, guys, and advocate for yourselves um, mm -hmm. and, and make sure that you reach out and get some assistance. If, if you do have a, a eye injury or something and you are partially sighted or visually impaired, um, because it's important. Like, I'm sure everyone watching right now is very um, protective of the site we have left. <laughs> I know I am. Yes. So we want to take care of that for sure. What do you think? Oh, I agree 100%. And I, I agree, also agree with the statement that like, we don't necessarily see the detail, right? Our vision's already pretty low. So mm -hmm. we may not, we may not realize that, you know, if we do get splashed with a chemical or something, we may just think like, oh, it's fine. You know, like no, no, 
big change or I must be having a bad eye day the next day and not realizing that like, you know, the chemical that hit your eye is hurting you. Oh, so true. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it's not, it's not just cuts and lacerations. It's, it's, you know, it's stuff that gets in your eye that we may just think like, ah, oh, it's fine. It's okay. Yeah. You know, that's true because we all know those of us who are partially sighted, we all know we have our good eye days and our bad eye days. Mm -hmm. You don't exactly. want to pack it up to a bad eye day. Mm-hmm. Absolutely right. All right. Next slide. Oh, I think that's it. That's it. All right. Yes, ma'am. Well, you know, these awareness months are are really important, I think, because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it kind of brings to the top of mind certain things. Um, like you said in the beginning, though, it is important to just have that uh, eye injury prevention awareness all year. Right. That's that's important. Um, Always. But next month, next month is another awareness month. Right. We're going to have children's eye health awareness. Mm -hmm. Right. Or, or eye, eye care awareness and uh, a couple other things. What were the other ones, Michael? One was contact. Uh, lens. Yeah, that was contact lens. Uh, there was I believe it was cataract awareness month. Mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't just the children's eye care, but it was children's uh, eye, again, safety and, and eye care as well. Oh, so, so, you know, I think we should all always have, you know, um, uh, preventative and, you know, just general eye care and, uh, and safety in mind when you're dealing with your eyes. But, you know, it's important to be proactive. So we're gonna discuss a little bit of that. How often should you go get your eyes checked? Who should you talk to? Stuff like that. Right. And then mm -hmm. since it's the children's eye health and safety awareness, this is a really good episode that we're doing today because all of these things are for people of all different ages, not just adults, but little ones too. Because mm -hmm. for those of us who have little ones, we know that they love to run around and do yeah. all kinds of crazy stuff. So definitely want to take care of those uh, little eyes too. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> recommend uh, uh uh i i like goggles and eye protection to those who have children like three and below because you'll get you'll get a finger in the eye eventually eventually yeah <laughs> <laughs> what right, are you well that was really cool thank you so much yeah. it, it, you know always a joy to be on these coaches corners always mm -hmm. want people to definitely tune in um they can find uh, our content on our social media, right? On Facebook or mm -hmm. on YouTube. Um, you can find our stuff on Instagram as well. Um, for those of you out there who are actually users of Iris Vision, please um, go to our Facebook page and leave us a review. Tell us about your journey. Tell us how it's going with your Iris Vision because we want to know. Um, yes. If you're not on Facebook, uh, go ahead and go to Google and tell us about your journey there because we definitely are interested in hearing about how Iris Vision has changed your life. So do we have a pro tip today? Uh, yes, we always have a pro tip. Always, yes. So I've been hearing a couple clients that have been having issues with the uh, wireless charging pad. Okay. So um, when you line up your wireless charging pad, if you're not able to see the little light, the little LED, mm -hmm. So a few things you can do is you can actually set the, the pad. If you have a small mirror, you can set the pad on a mirror so that you can see the reflection of the, um, of the LED in the mirror. Uh, you can also very carefully place the headset on the pad and then lift both the pad and the headset up and just take a look and see if you can see the LED light. And of course, if you do have the voice prompts enabled, it should tell you that the wireless charging has begun. But if you don't, or if you have the headset turned off, you can just lift it, just gently, carefully lift it, look down, see the light, and then set it back down. Pro yeah. tip. And that's like lifting the whole, like the pad and the headset all together. The pad right? and the headset, like a, like a big sandwich, yes. I, I love sandwiches. Yeah, sandwiches are good. Yes, they are. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, thank you so much. That was the episode for today. Make sure you tune into the next one. Again, Children's Eye Health and Safety Awareness Month next month. All right. Thank you, guys. Bye, Bye. everyone. Thank you. <laughs>